Hi, my name is Ken Lasterson. This is a video for somebody who just uploaded a result and from the emails that he sent to me, he's a bit confused as to what to do. Not just as to what to do, but what to do with the microbiome as a whole. So this is a trying to do a education of what, who, what, when, how, and why. Microbiome is a evolving area. There are dozens of different theories as to what's going on. Some people says, okay, this is what you need to do just for, for, just to fix all your problems. Somebody else says something else. This is what you need to fix all of your problems. Often they are based on personal experience and, pers and frequently what I would call is a <sighs> philosophical belief in how the human body works. I am not a person so inclined. I'm a person who basically says, show me the study, shows me the facts, and that is what I will work from. And what worked for you won't work for the next person. I know I accept it, so I want to see what worked for, for a group of people which have been reasonably well controlled, done in studies. So now the site is based on that type of information. And the person, this person has one example, one site there, just one, first time up. And the first thing is, what does it, what can you do? The microbiome is strongly influenced with a whole bunch of conditions. For example, we have here, we have about 93 different conditions. Each of these conditions have what appears to be a distinctive microbiome shift associated with it, which means if you have that condition, this is how your bacteria have shifted. Generally, the bacteria shifting has facilitated or supported the medical condition. If you still have several conditions where it's been demonstrated that if you correct the microbiome, the severity of the symptoms goes down or in some cases totally disappear. So the microbiome shift seen are connected to um, condition, including, for example, cancer. Um, recently got an email back from somebody who, from a wife, and the um, husband has cancer diagnosis. She got his microbiome sample, put it through, used the cancer um, combination for suggestions from his own personal samples, and tried it simply because with cancer you try everything. Her physician, his physicians came back and was absolutely astounded with how fast the cancer went into regression. Why? Because we probably cut off all of the, like, like all the chemicals which the cancer was feeding up. You stop the food that cancer needs and voila, the cancer starts regression. Doesn't, it's not able to prosper anymore. So, that is sort of the high level view of it. When we come to looking at a personal sample, we got several ways of doing it. One is we could do look at a health analysis, which is here, which goes and looks at third parties, not my own, third parties view of what the magical microbiome should be, what the quote normal microbiome should be. To me, there's no such thing. Um, is a old, gross oversimplification. But what we have here is listed with what medical conditions he seems to match as in the medical conditions here. And the one thing is unhealthy percentile, but he is way down at a five percentile. And actually, which reminds me, let me go back and do a quick update to make sure we're using the latest data. I suspect we are, but it's always good to go back. Now let's go back in the health analysis. Yep, unhealthy age in fifth percentile, which is basically it's not saying that there's not a particular problem. I'm not sure why. Probably he's in the wrong direction. Need to that probably a bug. There are bugs there. There's a lot of stuff. I have nobody doing quality assurance, so bugs will get through. And then when I catch them, I will fix them. And now we have the list of bacteria deemed unhealthy. That is a so-so medium-sized list, not outrageous, but it does spell out things which are particular things. Generally, anything which is 90th percentile 
or higher is a concern. There's two streptococcus which are associated with a variety of medical conditions. Then we go down and look at Jason Harlick's recommendation. He has he's a naturopath based in Tasmania, Australia, and um, he has through decades of dealing with people, a microbiome sample, he was an early adapter, has come up with ranges which seems to be magical range, number ranges. So if this person actually came up in terms of everybody else, basically close to a 99 percentile. So he is not nothing indicating a particular health problem. You can see some of the things which are not ideal. So a little bit too much of just one bacteria, which sometimes is connected with SIBO. Uh, not enough of that one, and not enough of bifidobacterium. Whether or not you need bifidobacterium to be healthy is a philosophical question. Um, there are healthy people with zero bifidobacterium, and there are unhealthy people with high amounts of bifidobacterium. Things are not simple answer. These are complicated things, which takes a, takes a bunch of things. But Let's go back to saying you knew you're not ready to get yourself into a massive learning curve with the microbiome. We've tried making your life simple. It's about than saying, just give me suggestions. These are suggestions which the artificial intelligence engine creates from using three different approaches to generate things which each one of the approaches are in agreement with. In other words, whatever rules you want to try using, three different sets of rules come up with things which they have in common between them. In other words, it's a consensus. It is likely a pretty good set of suggestions. You could toss in your own preferences to your heart's content, but you may well overcomplicate things too much or just confuse yourself. So you just click here and it will go and calculate out a list of suggestions. It's a short list and the main items are items which are um, often used with irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, very common ones which are often are suggested by natural path and MDs. And it goes and specifies actually goes and suggests some um, antibiotics, which may help um, if we do have a streptococcus infection. So which one would do the greatest amount of benefit is spelled out. Doxycycline, which is often prescribed for acne, long term for acne. So there's no real rationale for a um, MD to push back against it, because after all, most of them will prescribe antibiotics for two years straight for a teenager with acne. And if you're having severe microbiome issues, uh, wait a minute, acne versus disabling microbiome condition, excuse me, um, if you can justify it for here, I really have trouble seeing a rational justification for denying it there. Common supplements against some things which potentially will make the bacteria serious things worse. Three common diet styles um, are things to do, things to avoid, etc. goes down. And this. So this is the quick and dirty, gives which probiotics to do and which ones are not to do. Some probiotics can make things worse. Which type of sugar are there? What switch supplements? For example, you got just about all the B vitamins there, so a B complex would be that. Also, we give the size of the dosages according to clinical studies. These are dosages that have been used in clinical studies. And thereby, I make the assumption that since some MD deemed them to be safe to do a clinical study with just dosage, these are generally deemed to be safe. More importantly, most of these dosages are from studies which show that these things were effective to cause changes. So it ends up being, okay, what dosage you should be using? These are from, from actual clinical studies on humans, and these are studies that cause this change. Having only a fraction of this may, may do nothing except reduce your, your pocketbook. 
So this gives you the amount, again, for most of the items, start with a low dosage and work up because it will take time for your body to adjust. Okay, let's go back to my profile because this particular person, something is slightly unusual here. Most of the people I deal with have chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID or even irritable. And what we happen is when we look at this percentile chart, which sees how whether or not you have a normal in a statistical sense microbiome, the numbers in each of these 10 percentile ranges should be about the same. And as you can see, we have the number in the low percentile ranges are underrepresented. They are far less than what we would expect. And up here, we have a pretty constant number throughout there. So we have something happening here. What we don't know explicitly, but we do know or see evidence that there's a problem with these ones because they are underrepresentative. All the numbers should be the same. If you want to know the statistics behind it, click here. I'll give you the everything. Gives you some items here, there. We did have a ton of other information. We have all sorts of information up at the top, which you can go in and do your own work if you want. Sometimes people say, okay, these are the free bacteria, which I am convinced from messages online, on Facebook, support groups, are the bacteria that are causing all my problems. Well, you can go off and look up those bacteria, see what modified them, and hand work everything yourself. I, I wish you the best with the results there. Um, because in general, you find if you check those groups, many people try, only a small percentage actually improve from the suggestions which are sold by the few people who are having great results with it. Again, the problem is every person is uniquely different. The microbiome is, very, is, a, is a key identifier of the difference. And if it's not determined by your microbiome explicitly, chances are the odds of it helping is going to be greatly reduced. And the odds of it hurting is going to be greatly increased. So if we go back to here, which we'll go back through and calculate again, what we will also have is a second link. And this one is right here, more technical details. And what this does, it spells out over, in this case, how many do we get up to? Um, 1,700 items are evaluated as in will it help or will it hurt? So here we have, have everything. You can go and say, okay, what type of diet style do you want? You can see what the value is. Some things will help. Other things will hurt, like low protein diet, restaurant diet. Uh, it's not good for this person. And then high thing. And there's a bit of complexities here because sometimes, um, we have two things that sound the same, but because of the term used, in the studies, they actually can mean technically something slight bit different. So, um, high animal protein, low fat, which agree here, restaurant diet tends to be high in protein and high in fat. Again, high fat diet to be done. So what it basically means is a low fat, high protein, probably meat diet. In other words, no hamburgers, you want lean cuts, of everything and then you can have things like gluten-free there etc but if you click here you go to the other end what you have is you have a high carbohydrate diet it's probably going to make your dysfunctions worse going on a ketogenic diet also will make it worse diet mediterranean diet another things that will make things worse so we have there and now we go there and again this is going for your diet style if you want to look at herb or spices you can go here marijuana something you shouldn't be doing licorice is something you should be doing all of liquor cumin etc so it just gives you a absolutely fine gray detail and gives you relatively ranking of it and you can go and see things as in things which there's great amount of consensus about and go from there. 
Okay, so this is basically it. So we what we are so for a newcomer, it's basically go here, get suggestions, and work with it. Or you can start the learning process. Part of the learning process is understanding the microbiome. And the microbiome is organized just like the world is. We have continents, we have countries, we have in each country we have states, inside each state we have counties or parishes, inside each county or parish we can have town and villages and the neighborhood. It's the same type of hierarchy. So everything here belongs to here. In some cases there is very little. And what you can do is you can go down here and you can look at all of the bacteria and we see there is a lot of bacteria there. And we get different things and you can go down and take a look at things where you're abnormal. Things are abnormal, either high or low, are marked with um by color. But I as I said before, there are different rules of thumb. For example, what is seen to be high or low? Box whisker is one method. Keltoff is a different method. We have classic lab ranges which are coming from different labs around the world. This is what they deem to be reference values. You can set a custom percentile. You can use JSON's numbers. Here we have different lab numbers and what they deem to be healthy. Nobody knows what the perfect answer is. Um, and that is unfortunate, but that is the reality. Um, we don't even have agreement on how to detect which bacteria you have. So give me suggestion is a idiot. Don't have to do much. Just click, take a look at the results and go from there. From that point onwards, you have entered a learning curve with a lot of gotchas, a lot of information there and you go from there one of the key things to to be aware of is that generally once you once you up to something like raise your display level which adds a bunch more data here um you can go in and um take a look at things in quite far more greater detail which is more or less for somebody who has invested time in learning about the microbiome okay I'm going to shut up and that should do it.